It's the end of an era at Grove, with Williams acquired by U.S. investment firm Doralton Capital. The sale ending F1 stalwart Sir Frank Williams' more than four-decade rule of the once mighty powerhouse that is still second only to Ferrari in terms of constructors' titles won. The team was sold for just 179.5 million US dollars for a reported 132 million payout, 7 million more than its 2019 budget, following repayment of third-party debts and transaction expenses. The squad's deputy team principal, Claire Williams, applauded the sale to Doralton Capital and hailed the firm as people who understand the sport and what it takes to be successful. The sale ensures the team's survival, but most importantly will provide a path to success, she said. Outwardly, there should be no change to the brand, the factory location, or chassis naming convention. But internally, things will transform as the firm applies its flexible and patient investment style. Former F1 driver Takuma Sato has become the 20th man to win the Indy 500 at least twice. The Japanese racer snatched the lead from Scott Dixon after the final pit stops and held him off until Spencer Piggott's crash four laps from home forced the race to end under caution. Two-time F1 world champion Fernando Alonso finished 21st, a clutch failure forcing the Spaniard a lap down with 75 to go. His shot at motorsport's unofficial triple crown will now have to wait until 2023 at least, with Renault ruling out his return while he builds up their efforts in F1. F1 is set to return to Istanbul this year for the first time since 2011, with the Turkish Grand Prix reportedly poised to complete 2020's calendar as the sport balks on a return to Asia. F1's current calendar has 13 confirmed rounds, but Istanbul is expected to follow Imola on November 15, before a Middle Eastern triple header, with two races in Bahrain, taking the final number to 17. Turkey's inclusion means Vietnam will be cancelled, with rumors F1 had tried to make Hanoi work by sharing freight costs with another Asian race, while less straightforward freight routes put paid to Jerez in Spain. F1's final triple header, its fourth for the season, could see the two races in Bahrain held on different layouts, the second on the high-speed outer track before the season finale in Abu Dhabi on December 13. F1's immediate future has been secured, with news last week that all 10 teams had signed up to the Concord Agreement that will bind them with the sport and its governing body, the FIA, until 2025. It's a monumental achievement, with the completed Concord Agreement capping off F1's transformation, arguably its greatest ever challenge. The secret financial details within Concord, such as prize money distribution, ensure a more level playing field, while the new era technical regulation revamp from 2022 aims to create closer racing. And FIA President Jean Tot saluted the teams for uniting during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic to safeguard the sport's future. I am proud of the way that all of Formula One stakeholders have worked together over the past months for the best interests of the sport and the fans to agree the pathway for more sustainable, fair and exciting competition at the pinnacle of motorsport, he said. Mercedes striking black livery W11 remains F1's class leading car, the dominant force that the squad has taken to the extreme with details like its dual axis steering or DAS system at the front, which helps with tire warm up and cornering, to its rear suspension that has been pushed back as far as possible to energize airflow to the diffuser for a significant boost in downforce. But a new technical directive from F1's governing body, the FIA, that aims to ban special qualifying engine modes, originally slated for Belgium, but now delayed to the following race at Monza to give teams time for testing on their engine dynamometers, could help the Silver Arrows. Mercedes has used its engine modes through the hybrid era to maximum effect in qualifying 
for a boost of up to three-tenths in Q3, which the FIA's ruling will address, along with enabling better policing of the power units across the board, given their ever-increasing complexity. But the technical directive could also have unintended side effects. Five laps of quali mode not being done gives us 25 laps of more performance in the race, and that is something we believe will give us more performance, said Mercedes Toto Wolff. It's likely that even without a three-tenth of a second advantage from their qualifying engine modes, Mercedes will still be on pole, with the average gap to its nearest rival almost nine-tenths of a second. Mercedes has revealed that changes to the W11 setup and its approach to tyre management helped it return to dominance in Spain, where Lewis Hamilton coasted to his 88th win. Blistering, which destroyed its 70th anniversary race just one week earlier at Silverstone, wasn't an issue in Barcelona. But thermal degradation was, forcing Hamilton to keep his tyres cool up front for the first 10 laps. We were managing the tyres, as was Verstappen. But when we needed a bit of performance, it was there and available. And Lewis was just able to eke out a tenth at a time at the key points in the race. And really, it paid dividends. Mercedes, however, knows it still has more work to do to ensure blistering does not bring it undone at future hot races. Are the problems fixed? It's unlikely. The situation that happened at Silverstone is different to what we had in Barcelona. We have to keep learning, we have to keep improving. Alfa Romeo reserve driver Robert Kubica returned to Poland earlier this month for a special drag race that pitted his F1 car against countryman Bartłomiej Marszałek's F1 H20 powerboat. The pair went full throttle with Kubica alongside Marszałek, who tore up the Vistula River before a quick 180 degree turn sent them back towards the finishing line. Kubica took outright honors and celebrated with some traditional Polish donuts. Alpha Tauri boss Franz Tost says that F1's definition of a constructor is out of date and the teams should be able to buy more parts from rivals and not just to reduce costs, but also barriers for new entrants. Tost is no doubt biased given Alpha Tauri is Red Bull's B team and could benefit from far greater sharing between the energy drink squads. But he argues that the top teams are nearly impossible for smaller rivals to catch in terms of their existing infrastructure. You spend millions and I'm just asking what for, he said. Why does every team have to have its own wind tunnel, its own CFD and 500 to 600 employees? The level of collaboration between teams is a hot technical topic, with the FIA's International Court of Appeal scheduled to look at Renault's protest of Racing Point's brake ducts and the appeals of the stewards' decision that enables the squad to continue using them. Mercedes Project One has made yet another step towards the road, with pre-production models of the 1000 brake horsepower hypercar hitting the company's Immendingen test track in Germany. The 2.8 million US dollar hypercar is the first to adapt a complete hybrid powertrain from an F1 car, proving the technology transfer from the track to the road where it could break 350 kilometers per hour. F1's iconic triple world champion Ayrton Senna has been crowned as the sport's fastest ever driver over one lap, according to 37 years of collated qualifying data crunched by Amazon Web Services. Senna pipped Michael Schumacher for the top spot, with Lewis Hamilton third ahead of Max Verstappen. But collective eyebrows were raised with inclusion of Heike Kovalainen at eighth and Jano Trulli ninth. The pair surprisingly ahead of four-time F1 world champion Sebastian Vettel, who closed out the top 10, with more puzzling names through the next group that made up the list of 20. McLaren's Lando Norris, in just his second season of F1, is in at number 15, while Alain Prost is 20th, with no mention of rapid heroes Juan Pablo Montoya, Keke Rosberg, or Mika Hakkinen. And while the list had teeth gnashing the world over, F1's defense of its methodology arguably made a lot more sense. 
If the results are such that they place Lando in the top 20 and Juan Pablo not, then that's because this is a very objective exercise in trying to answer a subjective question, said F1's Rob Smedley. Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.